All right, we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Brian Hart. I'm the executive director of the Esselstyn Foundation. We're going to give people uh, about, I don't know, 45 seconds to, to get logged in here. We're really excited to have you all. So thanks for, for joining us. And we're so lucky tonight to have uh, my new hero on the block, Rachel Brown, <laughs> author Rachel Brown. And we'll talk a little bit about her in a moment. But uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. And I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. As we as we were talking about before we started, you know, it's uh, if you get a group of people together, we'll talk about plant based eating until until you want us to stop. <laughs> I'm looking in the chat here, exactly. someone's saying your book is terrific. Ah, oh, hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Always yeah. nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I always say to Jane, we start on time and we try to end on time. That's always our that's always our brand. So. Uh, Let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, I'm Brian Hart. I'm the executive director of the Esselstyn Foundation. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, we are a 501c3 public charity, and our mission is to prevent and reverse lifestyle-related diseases through the promotion of whole food, plant-based nutrition. Um, our our most our work began with the work of my father-in-law, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr., who many of you have already seen present and or know of. And uh, we're really excited to do these once a month public sessions for the Esselstyn Foundation that are uh, free of charge to anybody. And we try to cover a variety of topics. But tonight we are especially lucky because we have uh, the author of one of my favorite new books, um, Rachel Brown, wrote a book called For Fork's Sake. Here it is. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure. And you can see it on the the, the uh, bookcase behind Rachel. So uh <laughs> And just so you know, Rachel Brown earned her plant-based nutrition certificate and food systems and sustainability certificate from the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutritional Studies at eCornell. I know many of you are, are graduates of that as, as well. Um, after being diagnosed with high cholesterol in her late 20s, she discovered a book called The China Study by our good friend, Dr. Colin Campbell, and she started exploring her, the science of nutrition. After simply uh, you know a couple of weeks of eating whole food, plant-based with no oil, her cholesterol dropped 50 points. And from there, she was off on a journey that uh, <laughs> continues to this day. Um, and that was the beginning of her whole family's journey of transitioning from what she calls the sad diet to uh, the happy diet. And she'll talk more about that. <laughs> she's also a licensed practitioner of massage, and she's a certified yoga and Pilates instructor. Uh, and a spiritual director, which I would love to know more about if she ever gets a chance to tell us tonight. Um, she uh, is happily married with two grown children. She lives in California. And uh, her, when she's not writing amazing books that are, are you should give to all your friends and family members uh, for Christmas or for the holidays, because <laughs> it's, it's a perfect stocking stuffer, she can be found uh, running trails, rock climbing, cycling, and backpacking with her husband. She has a degree in geography from the University of Washington and has been an adjunct professor in nutrition and wellness. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rachel. Rachel, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Brian, and thank you for that introduction. I will try and screen share here, get the presentation up and running. All right. Can you see that? Hopefully. Can you see that, Brian? Looks great. Okay, good deal. So um, just a little bit more background. Thank you for all that you said, but um, kind of the background as to why I wrote this book. Um, that's my family at the very beginning of COVID. And um, how that ties in is that, um, you know, I was happily doing other things <laughs> before COVID hit. We uh, went plant-based 13 years ago. And that happened because I had a nephew who was five years old and he, um, he came up with cancer. His mom was in nursing school at the time. And she had a professor who asked her if she'd looked at the role of nutrition in cancer. And, um, they had a small hobby farm. She had taught me how to make our own mozzarella cheese, like pull mozzarella cheese the summer before. We had 13 chickens at the time. My daughter had a little chicken egg business, um, not chicken, egg business that she would sell to neighbors and friends. Um, so we you know, were eating what we thought was healthy. But when my sister-in-law um, was handed the China study, she read that book and she watched Forks Over Knives and she called me and said, oh my gosh, you have to 
check this out. And they went whole food, plant-based, no oil overnight. Um, so I, you know, I always considered myself decently healthy. I grew up with a mom who cooked dinner every night and, um, she was mostly pescatarian and I didn't love fish, but, uh, we had meat like maybe once, sometimes twice a week. Um, lots of vegetables, lots of fruit. She always had a garden, but in my early twenties, I, um, got some blood work done, just a normal thing. And it came back that I had high cholesterol. And I had never wanted to take cholesterol medication because my dad was always on cholesterol medication and he would have these odd side effects, like he would lose his taste or something else. And so they'd put him on a different medication. And I just didn't want to have to take medication anyway, but um, I didn't want to go that route. So when my sister-in-law suggested I read the China study, I did. And I read that book and immediately I was mad. I was really angry because I had so many doctors who had told me, you know, well, cut out some cheese, reduce the number of eggs, exercise more. And I was a high school athlete. I played air numeral sports in college. I hiked and rock climb and ran. And um, it was so frustrating. And so I was mad, but I now know that those doctors probably didn't have this information. Um, but but yeah, that really spurred me on to make a change. So read the China study, watched Forks Over Knives um, with my husband, and we decided let's give this a try. Um, so at the time, 13 years ago, there weren't so many resources on the internet about eating this way, but um, we found Dr. McDougall's free online uh, program. So you could print off recipes. Um, and so that's what I did, printed out their 10 or 12 day program of uh, recipes. And we just ate whole food, plant-based, no oil for 10 days. So I got my blood work done at the beginning of that time. And then I went back and I couldn't get in for 17 days. So I got my blood work back, went to my doctor and he said, what are you doing? Because whatever you did, keep doing it, your cholesterol dropped 50 points. Um, so that was such great news for us, but also um, kind of bad news because we were like, oh no, <laughs> our kids are six and eight. Like this was just a short experience. Like, wow, it works, but we're going to have to do this. So um, that was the beginning of our journey. And, you know, six and eight year olds, um, they're, they're adaptable. I'm here to tell you, um, you know, they're now, my kids are now 19 and 21 eating this way because they choose to. They're away out of state um, at college and, and they feel wonderful eating this way. And I always forget to mention my, my five-year-old nephew at that time is now um, a happy young adult, so healthy as well. So how do I get my kids on board? This can also work. It doesn't have to be your kids. It could be your grandkids um, or even just somebody else in your household. But specifically for kids, um, I find it really helpful to ask them what they like to eat. So make a list of their favorite meals. Just ask them. I mean, it might be macaroni and cheese, chicken nuggets, uh, cheese or pepperoni pizza, uh, lasagna, meatloaf. I mean, who knows? It could be anything, but just write those things down. Um, what you're going to do is go to the internet or grab one of your amazing plant-based cookbooks. Um, I know the Esselstyns have wonderful, we have plenty of them. Um, but you, even if you don't have anything, you can just go to Google and type in whole food, plant-based, no oil, macaroni and cheese, and you will come up with thousands of recipes to try. Um, so I suggest trying one. You don't have to make an announcement to the whole family. You can just make it and say, hey, I have a new recipe. We're having a baked macaroni and cheese tonight. Um, that could be a cashew mac and cheese, you know, with some peas or broccoli thrown in. Um, or it could be an oat cheese. I mean, if they don't like the first iteration of this new meal, you can try one of the other thousands that are online. But um, I suggest picking like two or three and um, and working through them, just finding a few new favorites for kids. Secondly, I suggest I spend some time in the beginning of the book doing the great clean out. And by that, I mean just getting rid of things that you don't want to eat, especially for this, let's say, 10-day, two-week time period. Um, so that means going through your fridge, going through your freezer, going through your pantry, cupboards, uh, maybe the garage if that's where you keep, you know, packaged stuff or whatever. Uh, but really starting there will help you um, as you go through this time period that you're trying to eat differently. So how to go from sad to happy. I do use the acronym happy because uh, standard American diet is sad, right? But 
whole food, plant-based, no oil, doesn't really roll off the tongue, like woof above a no. Um, so I came up with happy, healthy and plant-powered, yay. Um, so it's an easy way to remember, for kids especially, let's, let's go from sad to happy. So how to do this, I suggest um, pausing before you even start to ask yourself, um, how do I usually do things? You really do need to know yourself um, and, and know your kids. And just think about, are you somebody who is all in? Are you somebody who finds out, like I did, read the book, you know, looked up a few things and wanted to give it a go? Um, or are you a slower adopter? Maybe somebody who wants a little more information, maybe wants to get rid of a few offensive foods and add in, you know, greens with every meal for a time and then and keep going. Now, there's science behind both of these, but I would suggest at least in the beginning to really give it a solid 10 days to two weeks, like a real um, all in effort for the beginning. There's some reasons behind that. And um, some of it is that you will really notice that you feel different. You know, it's not that you won't feel better if you are slowly adopting this lifestyle, but you'll know you can attribute it to the food you're eating if you really dive in from the beginning. Um, your taste buds change every two weeks. So if you are cutting out that highly palatable salty, sweet, fatty food, um, you will notice more changes. Your taste will literally change. You'll enjoy the food you're having. Um, you'll also probably notice that you've got more energy, maybe that you're sleeping better. People might ask you like, what are you doing? You know, your skin looks amazing. Are you doing something different? Um, I had to put a disclaimer in the beginning of the book because in as little as two days, if you're on blood pressure medication or diabetes medication, you might need to get off medication. So I really do advise getting your blood draw before you start this and um, telling your doctor, if you, especially if you're on medications, that you're giving this a go. Um, but amazing things can be happening in our bodies in as little as a couple days. Um, but you can't feel your cholesterol dropping, right? So like I didn't in 17 days, I had no idea my cholesterol was dropping so much. So that blood work will really help you in the process. So how to get family buy-in. And this is, again, not just kids or grandkids, could be partners, spouses, uh, parents, whatever. Um, so I suggest watching some movies, some documentaries. There are some amazing ones out there, and this is just a few, um, especially if your kids or people in your life, loved ones, are athletes. Game Changers is a great one. Forks Over Knives, I think, is kind of the seminal work. Um, what the Health, They're Trying to Kill Us from Food to Freedom. I mean, Seaspiracy, Cowspiracy, there are so many out there now. So if you, whatever you know, platform that you watch movies on, if you type in Forks Over Knives or Game Changers, you're going to get a whole list of other uh, documentaries that you can watch. But they can be really helpful just to see that this has really worked for a lot of other people in some very amazing ways. And just to be reminded that you're not on this journey yourself. So especially in that 10 days, it can be wonderful to watch a documentary every night or every other night. Um, at least watch a couple, maybe buy some books or some new cookbooks um, to just help resource yourself as you're moving forward in, in hopefully continuing eating this way. Um, it can also help to write down your goals and your desires. I mean, we know this also by science, right? Like if you if you set a goal and you write it down, you've got a better chance of, of reaching that goal. So, you know, stop to pause and think for a minute, like what is it that you're wanting to change by changing your lifestyle. Maybe it's you want to get off medication. Maybe you want more energy or a healthy body size or image for yourself or your child, um, just less risk of disease. Whatever those goals or desires are, I would write them down and then maybe stick them inside that cupboard where you would usually go for your snacks. You know, usually people have a cupboard or an area where sometimes that package stuff is, you know, so you've now removed that during the great clean out, right? But when it's habit to go back to that place, there are your goals and desires that can remind you why you're doing this, this journey. The other thing I talk about is making some healthy treats. This is really so that your kids or loved ones don't think you're going to get rid of the TV next or the car. Um, you know, you're not supposed to be hungry when you eat this way. You don't need to be at all. You can be totally satisfied with what you're eating and healthy treats are not off the table. 
especially for kids, if you're getting rid of, you know, let's say they're used to eating packaged things in their lunches or after school, um, can be really great to have a cookie that you make or a bar. You know, I'm talking like um, black bean brownies or sweet potato blondies or, you know, a chocolate mousse. Um, you can make pies, you can make fantastic things. So you can even take like a banana or some applesauce, mash it up um, with some oats. You add a little vanilla, some cinnamon, you toss in maybe some raisins or cranberries, maybe some walnuts. Um, you stir that all up and you can make cookies out of that, right? Very basic recipe. Um, many wonderful recipes that you should check out that the Asselsons have come up with, but this is a very simple one. So you can throw those in the oven, bake them, and now you have these healthy cookies. Those healthy cookies can work as breakfast cookies. They can work as snacks or they can go in lunches. They can be dessert after dinner. But I mean, basically that healthy cookie that you just made is like breakfast oatmeal, right? So, um, don't don't let dessert go by the wayside or treats go by the wayside. That can really help to get buy-in um, if you make some some baked goods or um, no bake cookies or whatever bars. That can be a real treat. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. This is one of my favorite quotes from Chef Ag because it's so true. Um, you know, it's hard for seven year olds. They can't hop in the car and drive down to get ice cream at you know nine p.m. if they're wanting it. But it's also hard for us. So um, it's it's really helpful once again to get rid of the offending foods that you don't want to be eating, just to not have it be tempting you. Um, so make it the easiest choice when you're going through this this new trial. Um, have ready to eat fruit out, especially for kids. Kids love fruit. Um, if you don't already have a big bowl out where everybody can see it, where you pass by it, you know, every day in the kitchen or wherever is, wherever is convenient, but have fruit there that they can just grab at any time if they're hungry have veggies on hand and, um, you know, maybe not just the standard veggies that they're always used to. If you always do carrots and celery, then get some broccoli or cucumbers or jicama or something, something different. Um, and then it's going to be really helpful to actually wash those when you get home and chop them up so that they're easy to grab. Because I don't know a kid who will come in from playing and go to the veggie drawer and, you know, get a carrot out of the bunch or out of the bag and go and wash it and slice it up. You know, if there's a cupboard to run to where there's already some packaged, you know, snacks, then they're probably not going to do that. So make it easy by having it ready to grab and in a designated place in the fridge. So like, here's the snack drawer, you know, or um, here's all the ready to eat stuff you can grab if you're ever hungry. It's helpful to have dips to have with those veggies too. So hummus, you can make so many different kinds of flavored hummus. Our kids really like dill pickle hummus. I just added pickle juice and some dill. Um, that was a favorite for them. If they don't like hummus, you can make a white bean dip or a black bean dip or um, you can make cashew ranch. You can make guacamole, um, all kinds of delicious dips that they can have those veggies in and also starch. You know, kids, when they're growing, when they're hopefully very active, um, sometimes they can be hungry, seems like bottomless hungry. So having some starch on hand, like complex carbohydrates, can be really helpful if they've already had their, you know, handful of veggies and they're like, I'm still hungry. Um, I'm talking things like whole wheat pita breads just cut into triangles or um, corn tortillas that you've cut into triangles and baked so they've got some chips. Um, you can cook up, bake some potatoes or sweet potatoes. I mean, we take potatoes on long bike rides with a little mustard and ketchup, perfect snack, um, and really provides energy when you need it. So um, have some starch on hand. You can also cook up a whole bunch of brown rice or um, whole wheat pasta or quinoa, um, couscous, you know, and, and have those in the fridge as well. So if a kid comes in and they're hungry, they can grab a bowl of brown rice, sprinkle some cinnamon on it, warm it up. And that's a really tasty snack too. So um, consider having things easy to grab. Uh, batch cooking will really help you here. Uh, really by batch cooking, all I mean is make extra, at least double or triple what you would usually make to use. So, you know, if you're making, if you're going to the effort to make a whole food plant-based lasagna, then make two of them. 
and stick one of them in the freezer to pull out later. Um, if you're making rice, make a whole bunch of it so you can pull off that big um, container of rice all week long. Same goes for really whatever you're making. It's just helpful to make a lot of it. It will make your life easier throughout the 10 days. And for the rest of your life. I mean, I, I batch cook all the time. Um, and then for kids, it can be really helpful to give choices. So by this, I mean, um, not just in the grocery store. That's a wonderful place. If you can bring your kids with you to shop, um, you could say, you know, what, what green vegetable would you like this week? Or um, can you pick three vegetables that we haven't had in a while? Um, so, you know, get them bought in. I mean, it's really amazing if they would grow the vegetable, you know, kids who would never touch kale, if they grow kale themselves or tomatoes, um, they will try eating it and probably love it. So, uh, but if you can't grow it, that's fine. You can, um, have them in the decision-making process as to what vegetables they do want to eat maybe. Um, the other thing is give choices, like at mealtime, if at all possible. You know, if you ask a four-year-old, would you like some salad? Um, they're probably not going to say yes. But if you say, would you like some salad or would you like green beans? All of a sudden, it's a choice. They have a choice, right? And we all like having choices. So that could be just another kind of helpful trick as you're, I'm not trick, but um, helpful in getting buy-in from little kids. What about when we're on the go? Uh, many families are super busy. I know our kids were in sports, competitive sports, and um, a lot of times you're, you know, running all over the place, getting to meets or um, events. So that's a normal part of life. But it doesn't have to mean that you, you can't eat this way. It's very doable. So it's really helpful to prep ahead of time. And like I was just talking about with shopping, it can be really helpful to prep together with your kids. So um, just then they know what's in the fridge. They know what's easy to grab. You know, they can get their lunches or their snacks together, depending on their age. Um, so prepping ahead of time, just spending a couple hours, maybe on the weekend or whenever you have a little bit of free time will really help your um, Monday through Friday life with kids uh, through Saturday, even <laughs> with games. Um, Fruits and vegetables, um, those are easy things to pack, you know, to grab if you're going to go pick up kids and head to a sporting event. Um, I've got a recipe in my book for happy peanut butter or nut balls if they can't do uh, peanut butter. Um, super simple recipe. You can make a bunch of those, stick them in the freezer, and then just pull out some for lunches or or to bring to when you pick them up after school or send them to practice. Um, you can make healthy trail mixes. It doesn't have to have oily nuts and, you know, M&Ms in it. You can get, you know, raw nuts, real, real raw nuts. You can add, depending on their age to, you know, maybe Cheerios or a, you know, healthy green cereal. Um, add some dried fruit, things they like, maybe some pretzels. Um, and you can have a fantastic trail mix, non-dairy chocolate chips. Um, those that makes a really wonderful snack. Those healthy cookies we already talked about, those healthy desserts, those can be a wonderful treat. Um, and tea sandwiches, you know, by this I just mean make up a bunch of, you know, nut butter or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or some you know, chickpea tuna sandwiches, cut them into triangles, put them in a container. When the kids hop in the car, when you go to pick them up, you just pass that container back and um, they can have a few of those before they head to practice. These kind of snacks will give the kids energy that they need uh, without the high fructose corn syrup or the other junk that, you know, leads to like spikes and then dips. And these kind of snacks will have them hungry again at dinner too, which is, which is really great. One thing I love, and this is actually comes from, I, I heard Caldwell Esselstyn say this at some point, um, that he loves putting leftovers in pitas. We adopted that and it's fantastic. You have whole wheat pitas, cut them in half, whatever you had for dinner last night, you can stick in that pita with some greens, you know, maybe a little sauce of whatever kind you like or a little vinegar. Um, and it makes a fantastic meal. And it doesn't matter if you had soup, you know, if it's thick enough, you can stick it in there. Um, pasta, what, whatever you had, you stick it in a pita. It makes a fantastic snack. Um, you can also do the same with lavash or tortillas, but those, those are really great for uh, on the run kind of foods. And then if you haven't had time or, you know, you need a few bars or something that's all already pre-made. We really love Bar You Eat. They're out of Colorado. We met some of the owners. They don't use any oil in their bars. You can read all the ingredients. Um, fantastic product. Laura Bar is very similar. Um, 
you know, five ingredients, I think, or less in all their bars. Uh, eat the change is a great one. They, if your kids are young and they like fruit snacks, eat the change has these, um, they, they're kind of like fruit snacks, but they're carrots. You would never know <laughs> if you tried them. They're delicious. Um, and food nerd is a new one. Uh, great, great options for really young kids, toddlers. What about eating out? Um, you know, this could be on the way to a football game, like, you know, team sport kind of stuff, or just, you know, as a family. But just because you're eating this way doesn't mean you can't eat out. Now, if you're eating out, you have to know that you're probably going to get some oil in your food. Um, so you might not get the amazing drastic results if you're eating out a lot. Um, but it doesn't mean you can never eat out. So, you know, if you're going by a sandwich shop, a Subway or Jersey Mike's or whatever kind of sandwich shop you have near you, um, you can just make a veggie sandwich. And we do that. We just ask for literally all the veggies. We do mustard, a little, um, they have red wine vinegar or balsamic vinegar and uh, herbs and salt and pepper. And that's our sandwich. So that can be a fantastic, easy one. Uh, Mexican restaurants, taco stands, you can always get a bean, rice, guacamole burrito. Our kids are probably half made of bean, rice, and guacamole burritos. That was their favorite. Um, veggie burgers. I mean, even if you're at a In-N-Out we have here or, you know, Burger King or whatever, you don't have to have an impossible or a beyond burger. You can just get the burger minus the patty and cheese and any of that. Just basically the burger bun with like mustard and all the fixings and it makes a delicious burger actually. So if you're in a pinch, you can have that kind of veggie burger. Um, you can always do pasta with red sauce or veggies. You know, your little kids don't have to have plain pasta with butter and Parmesan and a side of French fries. That's literally what we saw a little girl eating a couple weeks ago at a restaurant. Um, if your kids are used to eating some veggies, I mean, they don't have to eat off the kids menu. You can get them some decent food. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. Uh, even if you're at a steak restaurant, you can find at an American steakhouse a really decent whole food plant-based meal. You know, usually there's a baked potato, there's wonderful veggie sides, you know, usually either greens, broccoli, something like that. Um, so you don't have to go without. And then especially for kids, you know, ethnic restaurants are actually usually the easiest to eat out at. Um, you can usually make some fantastic choices with food. A lot of them offer food um, that is all already without meat or animal products. So vegan sushi was a favorite for our kids. It's fun to eat with your hands um, or with chopsticks. Ethiopian is really fun as well. That's um, using your hands too. So that could be a fun one if you can um, find some different kind of restaurants that maybe you're not used to eating at. So common concerns that I hear from young families, especially, um, but parents, you know, of all ages and adults, um, the number one question I still get is, but what about protein? And um, this myth is not dispelled yet, but uh, page five of my book, I put a protein chart with all kinds of plant protein so that um, that myth can be dispelled immediately. The truth is that if your kids and if you are eating enough calories, you are getting enough protein. Um, so eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and grains and legumes and nuts and seeds, and you will be getting all the protein, maybe even more protein than you need. Um, so, and, and not to mention the fact that, you know, broccoli per gram has more protein than, um, than beef. So you, you're really not going to be short on protein. You don't have to worry about that. Another concern that people say is that, I, you know, I don't have the time. I don't have a lot of time to cook to do this. And I would say to that, um, this is not going to take you any more time than you're already spending if you're cooking at home, at least sometimes. I mean, sure, there's, you know, learning a new skill takes a little bit of time. So maybe in the beginning, you will spend a little more time. Um, but in the end, you'll spend less time uh, because you don't have to run to a specialty meat shop or a specialty cheese shop. You don't have to shop at a bunch of different places. You're not going to have to clean grease off your stove and, uh, and all that, you know. Um, it really does make cooking and life a lot easier. So, um, so yeah, you will save time in the long run, I, I promise. 
Another common concern, uh, misconception, is that it's too expensive, but that opposite is actually true. So when you think about it, um, if you take meat, all the different kinds of meat, right, chicken, beef, pork, everything, out of your grocery cart, and then you remove all the dairy products, so milk, half and half, yogurt, ice cream, cheese of so many varieties, um, you remove oil, like all good olive oil, all the oils that you would put in there, um, dessert kind of stuff, packaged food that has, you know, stuff you don't want to be eating in it. That's all the really expensive stuff that's actually in your grocery cart. So once you remove all that out, you can literally fill your grocery cart with all kinds of fruits and vegetables and beans and grains and uh, legumes. You can even get things like macadamia nuts or, you know, cashews, things that used to seem pretty expensive. Um, you'll buy all that with a full cart and you'll still be spending less than you ever did before. So um, you don't need to live near a Whole Foods. You can eat this way shopping at your local grocery store. Um, you can purchase things online if you want. I, I prefer to to shop local as much as I can, but um, you can even eat this way if you only have a dollar tree or a dollar store near you. Um, it wouldn't be the most ideal, but you can always find a bag of greens at the dollar store. So um, rice, you can always find a bag of beans or lentils. You can get um, frozen or canned vegetables. So you can make a soup, you can make many dishes. So um, it, it's not going to be more expensive and uh, you don't need to live somewhere special or near a certain store uh, to be able to eat this way. I talk about having some easy wins, and uh, one of these is um, adding greens. You know, only 9%, around 9% of Americans are eating enough vegetables, so anytime you can add them in um, is fantastic. And I know um, Caldwell also suggests, I believe, five times a day, so it's not that hard to do, actually. Um, you know, you can add greens to your pasta if you're cooking pasta. Um, that last minute that you're cooking, toss in handfuls of greens, whatever kind of green you want, you know, chard, kale, spinach, whatever. Um, cook it for that last minute or 30 seconds. And then when you drain the water, your pasta and greens are all ready to go. You just need some sauce on top. You can chop up greens and add them to soups. Um, if you've got little kids and they don't really love greens, you can chop it up really small. Um, same goes for hash browns. You can find some, you make your own or find some oil-free hash browns in the freezer section and then add some onion or onion powder, um, some greens. That makes a fantastic breakfast or snack. Tofu scrambles, you can toss a whole bunch of greens in there. Um, smoothies for kids who really don't like greens. My son was was one of those who um, didn't like the color green, didn't want to eat anything that was green. So um, I would make smoothies and add a whole bunch of blueberries and other stuff. So it would, it would actually end up being more like a brownish purple, but that was better than green to him. So um, you can get greens in that way. And uh, even oatmeal. I know, Anne, this is one of our favorite, you know, savory oatmeal. If you're tired of sweet oatmeal um, with fruit on it, you can do greens and mushrooms and onion. Um, it's a fantastic way to get greens in. So um, I, I have this, you don't have to grow your own greens. You can just buy, you know, packages like this or Costco has a power greens, I think. So just buy a whole bunch or buy, you know, I buy several bunches of greens every week and then um, just use them up in whatever meal I'm making. So uh, if it gets to the end of the week and we have a bunch of greens, you can just strip them down, tear them up, toss a little um, onion powder and garlic powder, a little Bragg's on there. I mean, they melt down to hardly anything. It's a fantastic snack or you can add it to whatever you're cooking. So uh, fruit is another very easy win, especially for kids. Uh, you can use that as, you know, something before a meal, uh, if they're hungry as a snack and when they come in from playing or something or as dessert. But fruit is a fantastic thing to have around at all times. Um, and like I said earlier, go for variety. You know, if you always do bananas and oranges, then pick some grapes or pick a fruit they've never had or have them pick uh, at the store. You know, what would you like to try? Let's, let's try something new. You can also do frozen fruit or frozen veggies as well. Um, again, easy to put in smoothies or on oatmeal on different things. Um, but 
you know, doesn't doesn't have to be fresh all the time. And then this is a ripped Esselstyn, uh, cut the crap. It's an easy win to just get rid of that calorie rich and processed food. So really anything that's already in a package that you have to open, um, it's just best to have those out of the house, especially during this 10 days or two weeks that you're trying to make this a new way of being can be super helpful to find or build community. Um, there are plant pure pods out there. You can, you know, Google. If you don't have one near you, you can create one. Uh, it can be really fun to get some friends together and ask if you want to do a meal exchange or a potluck once a week or once every two weeks. Um, just to journey with others can be really wonderful. Not feel like you're swimming upstream alone. Um, a park and play plant-based meetup can be fun. We had short Wednesdays in our school district. So, you know, you could bring your picnic lunch and um, suggest that everybody brings a snack they can share that's plant-based without oil. And now all of a sudden you have parents who are sharing ideas and kids who know it's really normal to eat, you know, veggies and fruit and some healthy treats uh, with their friends. Um, whole communities or plant strong. These are other online communities that are wonderful to, um, again, just, just to know that you're not alone as you're making this change. So, um, my book, my website is at, uh, www.forforksakebook.com and um, you'll find on there some tips and recipes and a free guide that you can print out uh, and put up in your kitchen or give to your friend or whatever. Um, it's a guide to cooking and baking without oil. Uh, I also do one-on-one -on -one consultations and this is something that came about because people were asking for it. So uh, if you're looking for some extra help or maybe you feel like um, you know, I'm having a really hard time. My my son really misses chicken or, you know, my husband doesn't like eating whatever or grandparents, you know, think we're ruining our kids or whatever. Uh, we can journey through together some of those steps. Sometimes people have tried this before and quote unquote fell off the wagon and or they say, you know, I was always hungry, so I couldn't do it. So there are definite ways around that. I think if um if it didn't work before, then we can we can fix what wasn't working for sure, because this doesn't have to be hard and you don't have to be hungry. 50% um, of the proceeds from the sale of For Fork's Sake, I donate to charity and 1% goes to 1% for the planet. Uh, I told Brian earlier before we started, this really is like my love letter to Dr. Esselstyn, uh, T. Colin Campbell, Dr. John McDougall. I mean, these these people who are luminaries in telling the truth to many people that this has changed our life, the way we live, um, the way our kids live, some of their friends, boyfriends, girlfriends. I mean, you know, it can be a little rough maybe in middle school, but there are workarounds and then your kids will be, you know, 19, 21 cooking on their own. So um, we've got time for questions and answers. I'll stop sharing here. All right, can you see can you see me? I I can. <laughs> all right, perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, um first of all, uh somebody in the chat was asking what was the company that made the carrot bar? That sounded really good. It was like cool bars. Yeah, eat eat the change is the, the change. ones that mm -hmm, yep, have little like they're almost like fruit snacks that are carrots. Yeah, delicious. We eat them. I mean, little kids like them, but we like them too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I use all those different kinds of bars. I'm actually running, I'm running a 50 K on Saturday this weekend. So I'm trying to stock up on my plant-based bars. <laughs> oh, good for you. I I've only done one 50 K and that was when we lived in Alaska and we were not yet plant-based. So oh, awesome. <laughs> you will, you'll recover much better. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see. <laughs> all right. So I have, I have a few questions. Um, so what's your go-to quick meal? Like, let's say, let's set the scenario here. You know, you you picked up the kids from a late sporting event. You, you come home, you know, it's, it's 7.30. Everyone's cranky and hungry. Like, what's your go-to, like, emergency meal? Yeah, I would say for our family, um, burrito bowls or tostadas. You know, if you've cooked up that big batch of rice and you have that in the fridge, you've got some beans that are already cooked and then whatever else everybody likes, right? You can pull out frozen corn or, um, you know, 
avocado, onions, tomato, you've got some salsa, really simple. Everybody just pulls it out and then everybody can make the bowl that they want. Or the trick that I learned through the McDougal program was um, microwaving plain corn tortillas, like put two on a plate, microwave them two minutes, flip them over, uh, microwave a little less than that. And you have crispy, crunchy tostada shells. So oh, that makes them crunchy. Can, I didn't know that. Yes. It's like, it's like you baked them in the oven, you know, like we make chips. Like I know it, it changed our world. I mean, we have that literally like two times a week. So, oh my God. I didn't know that. Uh, I can't wait to changer. try it. Yes. So easy. So it just depends on that, you know, watch them because every microwave is a little bit different, but, um, and I tried this in our like toaster oven and almost burned the house down. So you really need to watch them. Um, but yeah, it's super simple. So yeah, I would say burrito bowls, but you can also do, you know, if you've, if you've cooked up tofu instead of, you know, maybe your family doesn't like Mexican food, you know, if you've got some cubed tofu cooked up and you've got that rice or quinoa already cooked up, same thing, you know, you can toss things in edamame, corn, again, fresh veggies, whatever on top with some sauces. And it's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite sauce? Like we talk at our, in our house all the time is it really doesn't matter what you put in your bowl. It's as long as you have a good sauce. I know it's so true. And there are so many amazing sauces out there, you know? So we try and have, again, another McDougal, um, somebody shared the simplest dressing in the world was equal parts mustard and syrup, like oh. 100% pure maple syrup. Sounds crazy, but it's like honey mustard. So, you know, you can add some um, tahini to that to make it creamy or, you know, and some lemon juice and some dill or something. I mean, you can make it fancy if you want, but that is a super easy sauce that we put on almost everything. Um, but yeah, you know, everything from cashew ranch or some oat ranch, uh, so many fantastic sauces. But on a daily basis, I would say tamari, uh, brags, those are like, staples we are never without <laughs> yeah 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 um we've discovered um a salsa that we had when we were in um down in uh costa rica that's um uh, I'm, I'm spacing the name suddenly but I'll, I'll come up with it in a second but anyway that's another one of our go-to sauces um yep. excellent so um another thing uh, so greens, as you mentioned, getting greens into your family's life is so important. Um, did you have, when your kids were young, did you have a strategy that you used to get them to at least eat some greens? You know, I do talk in the book about some kind of games that we played at the dinner table and some ideas for helping, especially young kids who maybe don't want to try something. Um, my husband grew up with the rule, the no thank you helping in his family. So if you said no thank you, that meant you just got a little tiny, you know, bite that you had to try. Um, so so we did that. Um, we also would do things like, you know, how about you're four years old, you have to take four bites, you know. Oh. Um, that also works with like 35 year olds. If they don't like, <laughs> you know, you got to take 35 bites. So um, we would have that, you know. I, I talk about some other games we played, you know, for whatever reason, my son didn't love soup, like with chunks in it. And so one night out of frustration, I was like, okay, close your eyes. I'm going to give you a bite of soup. Can you tell me what it is, you know? And for whatever reason, this was so fun to him. I mean, he was wrong half the time, but he wanted to keep playing, you know? So um, I, I, off, I talk about some um, key jar questions that we had, which was something you could pull out. And it's just like a game that you can play. And kids are then interested in listening to somebody's story, um, telling their own story. And then all of a sudden they're eating. They want to be at the table because that's where the action is, right? right so right. we play high, low, and what the heck, you know, like you're high from the day, you're low from the day, and you're what the heck. Um, so those kind of things can be really helpful uh, just in, yeah, in keeping them there and keeping them interested. Yeah. You mentioned a really important point, which is this notion of giving kids choices and involving them in everything. That's so key. It's just a generally just awesome parenting suggestion, but especially when it comes to food, is, to, is when they're involved, if they picked the broccoli out at the store, they're more than likely to try it at dinner because they picked it. So they own it a little bit. It's so true. Yeah. And I see some of these videos now with like little tiny kids, like 
three-year-olds and under like cutting like they have these yeah. knives now i didn't i i mean i didn't let my kids cut that young now i i, I think it'll be really fun with maybe grandkids someday yeah. to allow that but you know there's these like safe knives so you can get really young kids involved and yeah it makes a huge difference for sure how about um Something, you know, whenever I do any research for articles that I write and things like that, or when Jane is doing her cookbooks, you always learn something new in researching and putting together a book. Was there anything you learned in the writing of For Fork's Sake that was really uh, like, oh, my God, like either duh or that's so amazing. Like, I can't wait to tell people that. Yeah, well, I would say several things. One of the things um that I just didn't know to the extent somebody was asking about one of the editors was like, well, but what about grass fed beef? You know, like that's so much better. And like how horrible grass fed beef is. I mean, even worse than, you know, CAFO kind of beef because right, right. they need so much more space and they live so much longer. And, you know, just all of it is way worse. So you know, people, it's another common misconception when people are like, well, all I eat is grass fed organic beef. And I'm like, well, if you're trying to help the planet, that's actually worse, you know, yeah. but um, that, that was a, a surprising one. Um, also, you know, people like shaming almonds or, you know, I, I did think, you know, we live in California. We, it was all over the place a few years back about, you know, how much water almond trees take you know and you would see these orchards where they'd cut down the trees because they were no longer able to water them and it's like a fraction of the water that goes to raising cattle i mean it's right. just it's absolutely insane so yeah some of those those facts on uh the planet were really really eye-opening and i wish they were just common knowledge yeah 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 all right um so uh, there's a bunch of people on the chat talking about Lozano. Yes, that's the name of the sauce. I forgot from Costa Rica. Ah, just, yeah. Uh, you can get it off Amazon. And it's another one of those sauces that if we're really desperate and like, so our, our desperation meal is black beans, some sort of green, usually uncooked, and then um, polenta, which is, you know, takes a second mm. to make. Three cups of water, yes. one cup of cornmeal, stir it for a second. Anyway, and then we drizzle it with uh, Lozano. That's kind of our go-to. Oh, so good. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. I, I'm thinking about it. Exactly. Sounds exactly. delicious. <laughs> yeah, so you said, I, I want to just, you and I were chatting before this, and you mentioned that um, your kids are all plant-based. You have two kids, and they're both plant-based now, right? They are. Yeah. You know, they were six and eight when we started. They're now 19 and 21. And um, they now live off campus. They both were in dorms the first you know, year in school. And that was doable, though not ideal at their schools. Um, my son's school is a bigger school. It, you know, he took a picture of the refrigerator to send to my daughter because it had like six different kinds of plant-based milks. He's like, oh. Ooh you know uh, he had a lot of brown rice bowls with tofu and broccoli you know um but totally made it work my daughter is at a smaller school in washington state western washington university it's got a huge environmental program but they were severely lacking in options um for food and i i tried to write and ask for changes i mean they're tied in with aramark and just getting a lot of bad food <laughs> so you did she the, yeah you did the same thing that my wife did is that uh <laughs> our two of our kids went to the same school in massachusetts and uh they had a terrible terrible food service situation and jane was writing them you know like hey i'd love to like do a presentation or like anything you know just to try to get somebody uh, it, it didn't get much better. She tried, she tried, but yeah, it's so sad. I mean, one time my daughter sent a picture of like, look at the vegan option. And there was a vegan thing on the sign. And when she got up to it, it was vegan sauce on chicken breast. Oh. <laughs> like, so what? Yeah, I mean, she's yeah. just supposed to take the sauce. I don't understand. You know? So, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of uh, greenwashing going on in uh, yeah. finding food, but now they live off campus, you know, so they cook for themselves and um, they enjoy cooking. And, you know, I tried to involve them as much as possible, you know, when they were younger, before they were super busy in sports and all that, but um, they enjoy cooking even then, you know, so um, it's really fun to see. Now they'll send pictures of these amazing, you know, pizzas that they're making and bon, tofu bon mi, you know, and yeah. I'm like, can we come over for dinner? Cause that looks amazing. Yeah, that's I wish right. we were closer. <laughs> it's All really right, somebody fun. somebody has a question about bread. Do you make your own bread or do you have a go-to bread you purchase? 
So um, like millions of others during COVID, I did make bread. And actually years ago, I did make bread. I found this amazing boule recipe that was very simple. I'm, I'm not into spending a lot of time kneading and all of that. And it was like, you dumped everything in the bowl and it really was like water, flour, yeast, and some salt. You stirred it up and then that would make four loaves. So it kind of fermented in your fridge. You just pulled off some. But we would eat a loaf like every meal. So um, I was like, we we don't need this much bread. It was fantastic, yeah. you know. Um, but no, I, I don't, you know, other than during COVID for a while, I was making bread. But um, we have some amazing local bakeries that make really great whole grain bread without oil. So um, we'll buy that uh, or sourdough. They make really great sourdough, too. Um, and then occasionally when the kids like, you know, when it was like sandwiches for lunch, we would do... Um, was it Killer Dave's? Yeah. Um, we could find that um, or or local sourdough. So um, whole wheat pitas. That's a, that's a, you know, that's one of our favorites. One of the other really easy meals takes a little more time because you have to cook it. But like you can make individual pizzas You can just use a whole wheat pita for your crust. Put whatever you want on there. A little cashew cheese. Good to go. Everybody has yeah. some pizza. Trader Joe's has a good uh, no oil added pita bread. So that's a that's a suggestion yes. to people. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we're big on Dave's Killer Bread as well as uh, Alvarado Street Bakery. They make a no yes. oil one, and then the, all the Ezekiel's tend Ezekiel. to be pretty healthy yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, um, do you have anything that you would like to leave our uh, our audience with? We've had a, like up to 170 people watching, which is great. So uh, that's awesome. Well, very yes. fun. You know. Yeah, I just I think. I mean, the message I want to spread, I, I didn't say in the beginning, I, I wrote this book because I kept trying to, when we did this, it was such an amazing change. And I kept trying to give the China study or other, you know, prevent reverse heart disease, how not to die to people. And they would give it back and like, feel bad. Like, I'm sorry, I, I don't have time to read this, especially young parents, you know, um, even now young parents are like, I don't read books, you know, I read blogs or I, <laughs> I don't read. So, um, my attempt at writing this book was to just make it short and sweet, kind of cheeky, like enough to stay interested, but give the why, like why for our bodies, why for our planet, is this necessary, you know, for the long run, for all of us? And then how, how do you actually put this into practice? So that was why I wrote this book. I mean, it's the audiobook is like under four hours. So it's a really, you can sit down and read it in one sitting, really. Um, so, but it's an easy one. And so I, I hope, and it's, it's been really fun to hear people say, you know, I give this to somebody, a friend who's always like, why are you? doing this you know it's a good one for parents or family who are like you know i'm kind of interested but not totally interested um so yeah that that's why i wrote it and it's been really fun just so heartening to have people email me i mean every week i get emails from somebody who either heard me speak or picked up the book somewhere found the website and you know they they're off medication they've lost weight, they feel better. I mean, and this is not just young families. As I was telling you, like last month, there was an 87 year old, you know, who she and her husband lost 14 pounds and are off two medications. So um, it really, this, this book was my effort at sharing this news with the world. And um, it just, it still blows me away how many people haven't heard of all this stuff. I mean, 13 years ago, there was not as much out there, right? But um, so we've come a long ways, but um, you know, there are amazing books out there. I hope everybody does read um, How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, The China Study, How Not to Die. I hope that this is like step one and then people get interested and um, do some more homework, find some more books, amazing cookbooks out there. Um, yeah, so many resources these days. So just just trying to do my part to to add another one. Well, thank you so much. I just love it. And again, I'm um, giving, I bought a bunch of them for the Esselstyn Foundation. I've been giving them away to everybody I know. Great stocking stuffer uh, for the holidays coming up. Um, once again, thank you so much, Rachel, for taking the time to to, to uh, present and to take questions and all that stuff. And uh, yeah. is there, what information do people know if they wanted to get in touch with you? Is it just, it's the for Fork's sake, uh, dot com. Yeah. For forksakebook.com is my website. Um, my email is on there as well for forksakebook at Gmail. I'm on Instagram for forksakebook. 
uh, Facebook for Fork's Sake Book as well. So um, yeah, those those are mostly where you can find me. I was going to say, even for Thanksgiving, this book makes a great like hostess gift. If you're going ah. somewhere for <laughs> Thanksgiving, you can bring a really, t- I mean, Thanksgiving is a fantastic plant-based holiday. Uh, you don't even need turkey. I mean, all the other dishes are pretty much plant-based if you remove the butter and oil. So um, it's it's a great one to bring as a hostess gift too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, thanks again, Rachel. I'm sure you and I will be working together soon on something else, but it's been such a pleasure. Thanks again and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. And yeah, I look forward to it, Brian. Thank all right. You. Bye everybody.